Last one for this week, we're going to do the antithesis of the third and fourth antinomy. Uh, and these ones are actually going to be a little bit easier. So for example, the antithesis for the third antinomy is an argument essentially for determinism. So saying that there is no such thing as freedom, uh, namely freedom of the will is what we're thinking of there. And the essential idea is that if there was such a thing as freedom, so something that happened without an antecedent cause, then this would violate the basic laws of causality. And we've already argued for the laws of causality, so that's not gonna, it's not gonna work. Okay, so um, that one is actually a much easier argument than a lot of the others that we've been looking at. Now, the antithesis for the fourth antinomy says that there does not exist any kind of necessary being. And here it says there doesn't exist any kind of necessary being either in the world or outside the world. So the argument that there can't be a necessary being outside the world is uh, actually quite similar to how we argued in the thesis that the necessary being has to be a part of the world. But now in the antithesis, what is pointed out is the idea that if this necessary being is part of the world, then uh, once again, we violate something like these laws of causality. So there's a beginning which is unconditionally necessary. And this is also a violation of uh, the laws of nature, the laws of physics, we might say. Okay, So the antithesis for these uh, basically in both cases relies on the idea that we presume that there is such a thing as causality, that uh, every alteration has its cause.